So guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on our electro techniques, uh, now working on the measuring instruments. So we shall consider uh, the November 2022 uh, question paper that we are given on question number six on the measuring instruments. So with the first part that we have here was that uh, a voltmeter, which is a resistance of uh, 1000 ohms and an ammeter, uh, which is a resistance of 0 0,3 ohms were used to measure the value of two resistors in this case, all right? To measure the first, so the first one, the short shunt method was used, short shunt method was used, and the readings obtained were 15 volt and uh, 0, uh, 0 0,07 amps. So we've got uh, on the voltmeter and uh, the ammeter respectively. Then in order to measure the second resistor, a long shunt was used on the second part. All right. So the question was, calculate the percentage error in each case. Which cases are you talking about? We have got the first case of uh, having it under the short shunt method. In this case, having this under the short shunt method. All right. So we're going to apply our watt meter concept. In this case, we have having a volt meter and uh, which has got a resistance. So meaning to say, if we are considering a short shunt in this uh, case, all right, so let us consider this for a short shunt. I'm just gonna have uh, a diagram for a short shunt so that we understand each other here. So remember that for a short shunt, what separates a short shunt and long shunt is the application of the current, the total current. On a short shunt, we shall have the total current in, in that is going to be, our total current into the circuit in this case, all right, whereby we have our voltmeter in this case here, we've got our voltmeter connected in parallel with uh, the unknown resistor. So here we are going to have our unknown resistor. All right, sorry for that. So we are going to have our unknown resistor at this point. So this is our Rx. Like I said, for a short shunt, the current, the total current is the one that is here. For a long shunt, we shall have your total current inside here. So uh, that is the difference that you're supposed to note between these two. So we are given the total current across the ammeter. So let us just indicate this across our ammeter in this case. All right, so we are just gonna have our ammeter to show that here we have got the flow of current and uh, our total voltage from the supply and so forth. All right, so this is what we have. We've got the resistance of 1000 ohms. In this case, a voltmeter is the one, which means this voltmeter here, it has uh, a, a resistance in this case. Here, yes, we are going to know the current that is going to flow across the voltmeter, the current across the unknown resistor in this case. But here we are given the voltage across this voltmeter. So we've got R, V being uh, 1000 ohms. So we are given 1000 ohms, which is a resistance of 0 0,3. So the, the resistance across uh, the ammeter in this case is going to be given as a 0 0,3 ohms. Uh, that is uh, uh, the information that you are given. So in order for us to measure the resistance of the unknown that you are given, we are given that if we are going to apply the short shunt with the readings of 15 volts. So this voltage that we are given of 15 volts with the current of 0, comma, of uh, 0, comma 0, 0,07 in this case, right? So let us have this as uh, 0, comma 0, 0,07 amps. This is the information that is taken on our short shunt in this case, all right? So this is the information that we have taken from our short shunt. On a long shunt, they are different. We are working with a voltage of six volts at a current of two amps. So meaning to say these two are different. So we're going to focus on the short shunt. So remember our question is to calculate the percentage error in each case. So like I said, we are going to start with our short shunt in this case, whereby we understand that the percentage error is going to be taken uh, from our formula in this case. The percentage error is going to be given as uh, Rx, which is the unknown resistor, minus the apparent resistance, in this case, everything over Rx. 
all right, which is our unknown resistance times 100%. So meaning to say we are in need of calculating the unknown resistor, R A up in this case, which is the apparent uh, resistance uh, that is taken from the voltage and current that is for the short shunt that we have in this case from the voltage and current that we have, we are going to uh, uh, calculate our apparent uh, resistance in this case. So you can start with this one first because this one is direct. So our apparent resistance from voltage over current of the short shunt. So that is the voltage of 15 over the current voltage over the current, sorry, that's 0 0.07. So meaning to say we are going to obtain uh, 214.286 in ohms. So this is our apparent resistance in this case. Having our apparent resistance, uh, which is 214.286 ohms, we are going to calculate Rx. That is the only part that is left, which is the unknown resistance in this case. Where are we going to obtain our Rx from? We know that here there's going to be a voltage drop here from uh, current X, unknown current times uh, the current that is flowing across the unknown resistor and the a non-resistor in this case. So our formula was supposed to be RV. We're supposed to have our RX, I mean, which is our unknown resistance from the total voltage over the current minus the current across because we're supposed to have voltage over current, but we subtract now the current, the total current minus the current across the voltmeter in this case. Uh, take note what is happening here. Let me explain this way so that you understand me. Remember, this is a parallel combination. This voltage that we see here is, is the one that is being measured with our voltmeter, is the one that we are seeing here. This same voltage is the one that we see at this point. So what we need here, calculating here to say current, current minus this IV, it, it is this one from our Kirchhoff's law, this is our total current. So you know that the current flowing towards the junction, which is the total current, is equal to the current across the voltmeter plus the current across the unknown resistor, which is Ix. So meaning to say Ix in this case is going to be the total current minus the current across the voltmeter. That is the unknown current. So our formula in this actual sense was supposed to be written as Rx is equal to V over Rx, but our V over Ix, the current, the current we are dealing with, with the current. So therefore our Rx here from V over Ix, the Ix, which is the current across the unknown resistor, which is the one that we say the total current minus the current across the voltmeter. So yes, we shall have the voltage over the total current minus the current across the voltmeter. That is the idea that we are obtaining from this Rx. So if we check the total voltage we have from our information here that we are given, the total voltage there is given to measure 15 volts. The total current is given there to measure 0, uh, 0, 0,07 amps, but we do not have the current across the voltmeter in this case. So where are we going to have the current across the voltmeter? We have the resistance across the voltmeter. In this case, we have the resistance here of 1000 ohms. So using the voltage because the voltage here is the same, which is the one of 15 volts. So we have the voltage and the resistance. We can calculate the voltage, uh, the current across our voltmeter in this case. So that means uh, we shall have the current across the voltmeter. All right, so let us calculate uh, the current across the voltmeter in this case, in this case, across the voltmeter. All right, so the current here, is going to be given as IV in this case, which is the voltage over the resistance across that uh, voltmeter. So we're going to have the voltage over RV. We have uh, RV in this case. Sometimes they give you that current as it is, but in this case, they give you the, the resistance. So you use the voltage versus the resistance 15 divided to the resistance of uh, 1000 in this case. That is going to give us the current across the voltmeter of uh, 0 0.015 uh, amps. All right, so having this current now, we can calculate our resistance across 
which is uh, this one, the unknown resistance that we have across this V. So we said this is going to be taken from voltage over current, but the current is I minus IV. So we are going to have the voltage, our supply of 15 over the total current in this case of 0, comma, that's 0, comma 0.07 minus the voltage across the voltmeter in this case, which is uh, 0, 0.015. So this is going to give us the unknown resistance that it was going to give us something like uh, 272,727 ohms. All right, so that is uh, the value of unknown resistance. Why calculating the value of the unknown resistance? Remember, our concept here is to calculate the percentage error. And we said on our formula here, for the percentage error, we are going to use it as Rx, which is the unknown resistor over the apparent resistance, minus the apparent resistance over that same RC that we are having. So meaning to say, we are going to calculate our percentage error from there. So our percentage error uh, from our formula, we say that is Rx minus the apparent resistance over Rx, which is the unknown resistance times 100%. We have these values here, Rx, we calculated our Rx, so we are just going to substitute uh, our information. So our percentage error is going to be 272,727 minus the apparent resistance, which is the one that we got from voltage over current of uh, 214,286. All right, so that is everything over the same Rx, which is uh, 272,727 times 100%. So that is going to give us our percentage error given or working with a short shunt. These are the calculations that you're supposed to take into consideration. So this was going to give us 21,428%. Uh, so that was going to be our percentage error, which is approximately 21%. Uh, In this case, it's actually an approximate of uh, 21%. So that is how we can have our percentage error in a short shunt uh, condition uh, that we have. So like I said, the, the difference between a short shunt and a long shunt is, the, is on the currents. This time, we are going to have this current on this part as the input. That is the only difference that we shall have. So let us consider a long shunt and see what was going to happen as we are given that we are supposed to have this for each condition. So on a long shunt, all right, so let's see what was gonna happen if we are dealing with a long shunt. So like I said, the difference is on the currents. This time we shall have our current in inside. The total current is going to be inside after the voltmeter. That is where we are going to connect our, uh, our ammeter. We shall connect our ammeter after. Previously, our ammeter was here. But this time we are going to have our ammeter after. That is the condition that we have. If you can note these differences, you are done. That is uh, the difference between a short shunt and a long shunt. So here we've got our supply voltage and this is our ammeter, our voltmeter. Then this is our unknown resistor Rx. So this time we shall have the current flowing here, direct our supply current flowing here. We already have that supply current and that supply current is the same as the current flowing here. So meaning to say our IX is equal to the supply current in this case. All right. So remember the voltmeter, its resistance does not change. The resistance across the voltmeter, this one is not changing. Our RX is not going to change here. I mean, our RV, the resistance across the voltmeter is still the same. So we are given the resistance across the voltmeter of 1000 ohms and also its ammeter uh, resistance in this case the ammeter resistance is not going to change it's going to remain as it is 0, 0,3 ohms what is changing is that when now we are to measure the long shunt for the long shunt method in this case we are going to obtain 6 volts and 2 amps so we are going to obtain a voltage of six volts and two amps as for our current. So this is what is going to be measured this time for a long shunt. So this is the information that is corresponding to our long shunt, meaning to say our voltage this time is at six volts. 
while well, the current is at two amps. That is the condition of our question. So the question is we are supposed to calculate the percentage error, but only that the case has changed to be of a long shunt. The formula is still the same as I stated before that our percentage error in this case, this is the percentage error. It is going to be the unknown resistor minus the apparent resistance in this case over the unknown resistance times 100%. So this is what you're going to have at the end. But now we are supposed to calculate the apparent resistance. Again, the formula for the apparent resistance is still the same. Uh, the voltage over the current, but you use the one that you are working with always for the given condition. So our apparent resistance, this one is direct voltage over current, which is the voltage of six over the current of two. So we are going to obtain our apparent resistance in this case. So that's R up, which is uh, going to be three amps. All right, so we move on to the unknown resistance this time, which is Rx. If we consider this diagram this time, uh, I want us to consider what is happening this time here for us to find Rx. We are supposed to have our Rx given as the voltage over the current minus Ra in this case. All right. If we are to consider, we've got the resistance across the meter. In this case, this time, there's a resistance across the meter. So that means we are going to subtract that from the voltage over the current resistance. So we've got resistance minus the resistance across the meter because the meter has got an internal resistance. The meter that we see here, it has an internal resistance, which is the difference that we see from the previous case that we had. We are not considering our meter because it was outside here, that our meter was outside. But this time our meter is directly affecting our Rx. So we are supposed to subtract the internal resistance of the meter from the one that we obtain from our voltmeter. So meaning to say our Rx is going to be V, which is a six over. Uh, so it's simply here, we are saying R up minus R A. So that is six over two minus R A, which is 0 0.3. So that means our Rx was going to be, this is going to be three minus 0, 0,3, which is something like uh, 2,7 ohms. So we have our unknown resistance. And uh, as we can see, this one is uh, a little bit direct because all the values here are there. We have got our Rx, we have got our apparent resistance. So we can simply substitute here. So our percentage error was going to be given as Rx, which is uh, 2,7 minus the apparent resistance of uh, three over Rx, which is same 2,7 times uh, 100%. So this was going to give us a percentage, which is negative 11,111%. So this is actually approximately minus 11%. So if you check here, the previous case, we got a positive. This time we're getting a negative percentage. We actually wonder what is happening. So the minus that we see, it simply shows that the apparent resistance calculated was too high. The apparent resistance that we calculated on this part was too high. So if we consider a condition whereby uh, the apparent resistance is greater than the unknown resistance, we shall get a negative. In actual sense, the unknown resistance should be greater than the apparent resistance. This is supposed to be our normal case, but in this case, we are having the opposite way. That is why we are obtaining a negative. And this is the question they are asking here on uh, 6.2 to say, what does the minus sign indicate in, in, this, in this case? The negative that we see, the minus, what is it indicating this negative? This is the one that I'm explaining to say the apparent uh, resistance that was calculated was too high, that it's bigger than the unknown resistance on a condition that the apparent resistance is greater than the unknown resistance, we shall have a negative uh, percentage error. So this is what we are supposed to take into consideration as our reason. So. That is uh, simply like that apparent resistance calculated was too high, or we can uh, write mathematically, R up is greater than Rx, we're done. So that is how these questions might be on our measuring instruments. We shall see more questions to come. 
uh, as we are revising.